Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Advocate. And first things first, I'm back, baby. That's right. I know, I know. It's been like two months since my last episode, which is entirely my fault. But I am back, and some travel plans that might make recording a little bit difficult notwithstanding, I'm fully committed to getting the show back on track. And I've missed you guys, and I appreciate the emails and the Instagram messages. Seriously, you are the best. All right, well, enough of all that. Let's get into this week's latest developer news. So first up, just a reminder that it is now Microsoft Ignite, the tour season. And so I actually just got back from the Johannesburg tour stop, and I will be in Sydney next week. But we've got stops all over the globe where we'll be showing off the latest technical content for developers and IT pros. And so check out the link in the show notes and the description for all the details. And if you see me, I will be in Sydney and Singapore next. Please say hello. Next up, and this is breaking news as I record this, Visual Studio Code 1.42 is now available. And this is a massive update with tons of new features. And I can't name all of the new stuff, but just to tick off of the list, we've got a rename preview so you can see pending renames in a diff view easily. Um, and it's also now possible to limit the maximum number of editors open, which is really cool. And there's a folded code highlighting. There's some new updates on remote development. And there's also some new container tutorials. And uh, there's much, much more. So check Check out the show notes and the description for the full release notes, as well as a link to the VS Code GitHub. Next up, Visual Studio for Mac 8.5 Preview 2 is now available. And it has some really great new features, including a bunch of enhancements for Xamarin for Android and XAML authentication templates for ASP.NET core projects, as well as support for Mac OS high contrast mode. And so I've got a link in the show notes in the description to the blog post, which outlines those changes, as well as another post, which is highlighting some of those uh, uh, new features just for Xamarin devs. And speaking of Visual Studio for Mac, we've got a great online event on February 24th called Visual Studio for Mac Refresh. And it'll be full of talks around building mobile and web and games for your Mac using Visual Studio. And so I've got a link in the show notes and the description, like I've been saying, um, to the Save the Date page with a schedule. So please tune in. I know I'll be watching. Now, next up, in some more .NET news, Try.NET is now .NET Interactive. And as Maria explains in the blog post, the team wanted a new name that encompassed all the new experiences from the runnable snippets to the web, uh, to, for, for the web powered by Blazor to interactive documentation for .NET Core um, with .NET Try Global Tool and uh, the new .NET Notebooks. And so that means that there's now a new repo. And so I've got that link down below and some new installation instructions. And um, on that note, um, there's also some new awesome uh, support for .NET Notebooks. And, and that's something that came out a few months ago, which is .NET support for Jupyter Notebooks. And so with preview two of .NET Notebooks, there's now support for PowerShell, which is awesome. And so PowerShell Notebooks combine the management capabilities of PowerShell with the rich visual experiences of Notebooks. And I think that this is awesome. Uh, I think that Jupyter Notebooks should be everywhere. And I really love that PowerShell support is here too. So be sure to check that out. And so I've got a link to the .NET Interactive blog post, as well as more information on the PowerShell Notebooks uh, support in the show notes down below. Next up, GitHub Desktop 2.3 was recently released. And I wanted to highlight this because it's got some really great features for both newer Git users and people like me who use Git all the time but still manage to sometimes clone rather than fork a repo. And then they have a mess when they like want to push a commit. And so this new feature uh, means that when you're trying to push to a branch uh, but you because you cloned it instead of forking it, GitHub's like, you don't have access to do this. And now GitHub will ask you if you want to make a fork and then port all your work over. And so that's awesome. And one of the new things it also has is for people who, again, like me, sometimes forget to start working on a new branch and you wind up working on a protected branch and all your work is now unable to kind of push out, you can now move those uh, commits to a new branch without interruption. And so this is really great stuff. And so I've got links to the announcement and the GitHub desktop download in the show notes and the description down below. On Channel 9 this week, we have lots of great content. Over on the IoT show, we've got a special look at Farm Beats, and uh, that it combines like AI, Edge, and IoT for agriculture. Very cool stuff. On the AI show, Seth learns about Jupyter Notebooks in Visual Studio Code. Again, I want them everywhere. And finally, on the DevOps Lab, we've got a look at Terraform modules, which make it really easy to deploy reusable code. So be sure to uh, check out those videos. All those links are in the show notes and the description.
And now it's time for my pick of the week. All right, so this Sunday is Oscar night. Um, although to be clear, I will be in Australia where it will happen to be like Monday afternoon. Anyway, I love movies and so I wanted to find something movie themed and really Reddit totally, totally delivered. So a very cool guy made a 60 frames per second 4K version of the Lumiere Brothers famous 1896 film Arrival of a Train at La Ciot, and he did this using neural networks. And this is amazing work, and it's nerdy in a way that appeals to both the film history and the computer science sides of my brains. So it's got me thinking, what classic films would you like to see um, you know, up-resed using neural networks? Even more important, what film do you think should win Best Picture at the Oscars? Let me know in the comments down below. And actually, just go ahead and comment on any of the other stories that we've covered this week, too, because I would love to know your thoughts. Well, that does it for me this week. If you liked this episode, please give it a like. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Microsoft Developer, for all your nerd needs. See you next time. I'm back, baby, so I will. I will see you next time.